Hi, welcome back to my channel. This is actually a recorded, a requested video from Nazanin. She wanted to know, could I show you how to create tables for vocabulary words? And when I asked for a little more clarification, she wanted, I would like something with columns, but not with lines, just columns, say two or three with list of words. So, and that was very clear. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in Duxbury, and I'm gonna show you three ways. So we're gonna start with a worksheet that like maybe our kids would have been given that we would need to braille up. So these aren't vocabulary words, but these are probability and this is just data, but a data table. So it's the same kind of thing. So the first thing we're gonna do if we we're given this information, we are going to select and we're going to copy. We're going to control C and we're going to copy that information. Now, where I'm going to put that information, I'm going to put that into a Word document. So I copied and pasted. I control V and copied and pasted. Now, this does not look like the table that we started with. So what we're going to do, select that information again, go up to insert, go to table, and we're going to convert the table to a text. So the biggest thing that we're going to need to do is come down here, separate text at. We're going to tell the program how we need it to separate the text. How is it going to know what goes in what column? So I'm down here, I pushed other, and I'm going to add a single space. That's how I'm going to tell the computer how to make sure the program, how to make sure it's what goes in what table. Then we're going to do OK. And as you can see, it kind of did that for me. Now, it messed up with the of because there was a space between the of erasers. So I'm just going to type that in. I'm going to delete this. No. Right click, delete columns. I don't need this row where it says erasers. Oops. That space, so I'm gonna go delete, delete the row. Okay, so now that looks very much like what we had started with. We have this column and this column. Colors, pink, orange, purple, blue, number erasers, three, five, one, and two. What we always have to do, we're gonna have to save. And we'll just leave it as color. Then we have a video that shows you how to insert this little button right here, this braille button, if you don't have that on your word. So we're gonna go to braille. I'm going to move this over a smidge just so you can see everything. So it says Braille. I'm going to choose template. We're going to use Banna UEB. And so now it's kind of changed. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do, they want us to save again. We're going to come back to this Braille button. And it says open in Duxbury. And we're gonna give it a minute and it's going to open. Okay, now if you look at it, this is what came in. So it has color, it has a line kind of de de delineating from the titles of each of the columns to the, inf to the information that's there. So pretty much then I would just have to convert it to Braille and, it, and I'll show you how that's gonna look. But before we do that, I wanna go to view and go to codes. Now we had another video about codes. So if, we can, if you can see, this is gonna tell the Duxbury program how it's gonna be arranged, okay? So that's like the behind the scenes, we're gonna take the codes off. 
and we're going to go to file and translate. And now everything is in its correct place. So we have color, number of erasers. It's going to tell us pink. There's a nice space. It does have dots to separate that space. Then it has three. It's going to tell us orange. It's going to tell us purple. It's going to tell us blue. But it already has those nice columns. So there's a break that we didn't have to go back in and physically do that. So we And we could do it that way, but that's not necessarily the easiest way to do it. So basically, we just copied and pasted into a Word document. We made the information as the text into a table and then exported the table into Duxbury and it kept the format that we wanted. So an additional way, we're going to translate this back. And it's usually going to come up and tell me that, be careful, you don't want to re untranslate something. And it says you're attempting to translate a file, but that's okay. We're going to continue anyway. So we're back to the information in print. So we're going to turn back on the codes. So these are the codes. And we're going to do it this way because I want to show you Say if you want to do it manually, you want to go into Duxbury and you just want to create the table yourself. So this is the second way we're going to do it. We would have, we would go to table and we would go to create. Put this over here. We're going to do columns and it'll tell you that we want three rows, we want four columns, we're going to have a header row, and head of columns and we're going to do OK. So now it look it shows you the code. Say if we were going to do it, I'm going to go take the view off. This is what would have shown up had we not had the view that we wanted. OK, so that if we didn't have. If we were we didn't have the codes on. But we're going to have the codes on. So we're going to look, this will tell you, this opens the code, this opens the table. And then we have kind of like greater than, greater than, greater than, and a less than sign. The greater than code is showing the separation between the words. So say you have color, then you have the greater than sign. You have the number, and then you have the less than sign. The less than sign is going to show you that it's going to go to the next row. So we have pink, then we have the greater than sign, then we have three, and then we have the less than sign. It's going to tell us to go to the next row. So what we can do, we can, using the codes, add in this information. So say if we are going to do words, I'm going to tab over, definition, oops, I don't think that's spelled right. We're going to go oops. spell check. Okay, it's spelled right. Definition, then we're, we're going to go to the next one. We're going to go between the greater than sign the greater than signs, and we're going to do, let's define fun. There's the word, the definition, having a good time. That's the only space we need. We're gonna, then we're gonna go to the next line. I deleted those two greater than signs because we didn't need another column. We just have the words and the definition. So fun, having a good time, let's say sad, 
having a bad time. Take that one out and then that's gonna be the end. So this might seem like a lot of work and it kind of is. Obviously this copying and pasting would probably be the easiest way, but you can do it this way as well. So we're going to take the codes off and as you can see, I still have the words, I still have the definitions and everything is spaced the way it needs to be spaced. So if we go and we translate that, and again, it's telling me that I've already translated this. So it came out the same way as far as it gave me the information that I wanted, it gave me my columns. So I could do it copying and pasting, which felt like a little easier. I can do it the longer way by actually using the codes and typing in my information. So either of those two ways work. And if I'm going to show you one more thing. So say if I want to change the way this looks, when I go to table, now create is grayed out, but table properties is available to me. So now I can go to table properties and say if I wanted to do it listed, stair-stepped. So if I did it stair-stepped, now it has color. Next line is going to be the number of erasers. So we, the student would know that the first line that is all the way flush is going to tell us what the color is and the indented part is going to tell us the number of erasers. So we have pink and then we have three. We have orange and then we have five. So say if we were going to do that with oops, the words and the definitions, because sometimes the definitions are a little bit longer. You get a table properties. Let me move this back over. And I like that stair stepped one. If we're stair stepping, then we have words and definitions. So now the word is going to be fun. Then we have the definition having a good time. So this would be something if you're going to have longer vocabulary words or longer definitions. So those are two ways in which not only to do the tables, but how to change how those tables are presented. Now the last one, let's do one new one. So we're gonna translate this back again. Yes, we know. And see how it keeps, how it looks. We're gonna come on down. And we are going to, well, we created a table. You can physically word definition number one fun. Number two sad and when you let's see having a good time having a bad time so you kind of just create it yourself we're going to translate that yes we know we've translated it Now this isn't set up the way the same, the same is. We would have to physically keep them in columns itself. So obviously that's gonna be a lot more work because you'd have to type everything in and then once it was in braille, you would have to line everything up. 
I think I kind of try to show you easiest to like to the hardest, if that makes sense. Just so you can, you have three different ways that you can choose how to do it. I think the copy and pasting would probably be the be the easiest way, but you have to kind of do what works for you. That's why I showed you three ways. So I hope this helped. There are a lot of other videos that I have on Braille and Duxbury, so you can check those out. Also, I have started a podcast to help support teachers of the visually impaired. So if you, I, I'm leaving a link down below, so go check that out. Have a wonderful rest of your day.